Hi, my name is Maureen Duffy. I'm from the Fedora design team, and I'm going to be teaching you how to automate the production of graphics using Inkscape. Um, so the sort of background or the context here is the, we'll be using an example of making um, title slides for conference presentations. And here I've developed a um, template, which I can demonstrate to you. Please load, there it is. All right, yeah. So this is the template that I made for this example. And it basically has the conference name. The conference name, and if you look at the layers here, I've named them particularly because when I started trying to figure out the best way to do this, um, I used to write Python scripts that would go through the SVG DOM based on the name of the object in the Inkscape file and replacing them. There's actually a very handy extension available for Inkscape now called Next Generator that gives you a GUI-based way to do the same thing. So it actually doesn't matter what you name the objects. I gave them nice and neat organized names here, but you don't really need to do that. But the conference name is a little bit fancy, so I have it with like a gradient and a drop shadow and it's grouped together. So there's that. Um, the talk name is there and then the presenter name is here. And some a few, a few tips for working with the templates and creating your own template is number one, you probably, especially for something that you think might run into multiple lines on occasion, you wanna plan out extra space for it. So I planned out extra vertical space for the presenter names in case there was more than one presenter. I planned out extra vertical space for the talk name and I, there's a little bit for the conference name too, but I'm assuming your conference name is not gonna be that long. Um, the other thing is that when you're making them, what I prefer to use, there's two ways of making text objects in Inkscape, and one is like multi-line and one is not multi-line. Um, so to make just like a not multi-line one, normally you just click and type, and it's not always going to be multi-line, I don't think. Yeah. So, but what you can do instead is using the text tool, you can click and drag, and then that will give you a multi-line text object. And you'll see here, like it shows, and this doesn't show after you save it and reopen it for some reason, but this shows here where you have a text box. So that's for like the multi-line container. And I'm probably using all the wrong terms, by the way. This is just my understanding as a user. Um, and then it has a T-span object and the actual text content is in the T-span object. But the reason you wanna do this is you wanna define the area in which it's okay for there to be text for that item. Right. So for here, when I did this one, you can see that I defined a centered, that's the other thing is what well, we'll talk about that. But I defined an area that didn't go too close to the margins because I didn't think that would look good. I gave it a certain amount of vertical space. Okay. Now there's two things to think about here. You want to make sure that the text inside any text item on the page is centered. And you see here it showed up left aligned, which is weird because I know I centered it, but that's okay. I'll just center it again. Oh, I think I'm hitting a bug or something because it's not, but it is centered. So it's centered on the screen. So I'm not going to worry about the icon. Okay. So make sure the text is centered and then also make sure that that text box object, which I guess is this, um, you're going to want to go into object, align and distribute. You want the alignment to be relative to the page. And then you're going to click here to center it on the page. Right, because if this is like over here, okay, maybe you don't want it centered. Maybe you want it on the left. That's fine. We could actually, you know what? We'll change this design so the presenter name's on the, on the left, just so you can see how that works. So because we want the presenter names on the left, I'm going to go here and double click on this text and get that to be left aligned. And then I also noticed that this box is going to run off the page. So I'm actually, I think part of the reason that this is all kind of mucky is that the text is centered inside the box. Okay, so that's right, that's center. But left doesn't work. I don't know what's going on there. There, okay. Justify seems to left align it, which is odd. I think I might have a buggy version of Inkscape, but that's all right. Um, anyway, just, just be conscious of the text alignment. If things don't, end up how you would like them to be. Um, just make sure that the alignments are right. And because I'm having some Inkscape bugginess, um, I might be running a development version, to be quite honest. I don't remember which one I opened up here. Um, you can actually go, it's edit, edit, 
XML editor. You can see the actual, I mean, this is like the code behind the file. If I go in here under presenter names, I see the T-SPAN. I can click on this one and it says justify. So I'm just gonna override that and put left because I want it to be left. And then here, do 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 text align center. <laughs> Alrighty then. So we're gonna fix that too. We're gonna go where it says text align center. You will probably not have to do this. I'm just showing you how to troubleshoot in case you run into an issue like this. Okay. All right. So I made those all left aligned. And then if I look in here looks left aligned, so that's good. And then we're gonna keep these all centered. So it's the same deal with these. You wanna make sure the text itself is centered and you wanna make sure that the box the text is in is centered. I'm gonna do this to each one of these. This should be centered. Oh, but it's not. Oh, it's going funky again. All right. Do, do, do. And see, I have a one and a two, so the one, one is the main, like the white one with the gradient, and then two is the drop shadow or vice versa. Um, so I'm looking at the style. I don't see. I think it's on the T-span. Text anchor middle, text align center. Text anchor middle, text align center. So those look right. So then for conference logo, we want that to be centered. Okay, so it's all centered now. Okay, so my template is ready. I'm trying to think of any other things you might run into. Um, so this is a format, and if you uh, forget this format or whatever, um, when you have the extension installed, which I'll show you how to install it. Um, oh yeah, because I didn't install, I uninstalled it so I could show you how to install it. But when you have the extension installed, it has a help tab that goes over all of this too, if you ever forget it. But basically, you have to make sure that you have a percent sign on either side. You have a capital var underscore. And then you have the name. Here, we're using a CSV file, which you can generate with any spreadsheet program. Um, oh, it's trying to end my call. OK. Um, and then this talk name is the name of the header in the CSV. So like, let me show you. So we're going to go here. And it's going to be, doo -doo -doo. okay. So if I open up, this is my example um, CSV file, right? So you can see the top, these are the headers, conference name, talk name, presenter names. So that's where each of these come from. And what it'll do is it'll go through each row and it'll say, oh, okay, so the conference name here is best con. So wherever I see percent sign var underscore conference name percent sign, I'm going to replace that with best con. Um, and then talk name, the same through each one, okay? And it might make more sense, it might be more visual if I open this up in a proper spreadsheet program for you. So let me just open that up real quick so you can see what it looks like. Uh, yeah, that's fine. There we go. So this is what it looks like in a proper spreadsheet program. And it always takes the top row as the the variable names, if that makes sense. So you're always going to use these, and you want them to be exactly correct. So if you have stuff like it's not printing out the right thing when you generate the graphics, it's probably a typo or something in the name of the, the variable. So just think about that. Um, if there is a space in the name of the variable, I believe you can just use an underscore but I haven't tested that out, but it's something to think about. Um, I, I purposely had no spaces in the column names just to make life easy on myself. Okay, so now I have the template. I'm going to save it. Now what we need to do um, is install this extension to get things going. So this is the extension right here. Oh, let me close LibreOffice. Um, this is the extension right here. It's called Next Generator. It's gitlab.com slash M-O-I-N-I slash Next Generator. I'll put a link somewhere so that you can grab it. Um, and what you're going to want to do, there's just two files you need. It's the inkx and the py files. So these are every Inkscape extension at least has one each of those. So I'm. this might not be the best way to do it, but it's my way. Um, I'm just going to go to each individual file, and I'm going to hit download. Okay, so I downloaded it, and of course I've downloaded it before, so it shows up, but that's fine. But you see there's like a little download button here, so I'm just clicking that. Okay, great, so there they are. Um, and then what I'm gonna do, um, this is kind of a neat trick in Inkscape. You go to Edit, 
preferences inside of Inkscape. And I already have it selected, but let's pretend that I did it fresh. Edit, preferences. OK, cool. So this is what your preferences will probably look like. You go down towards the bottom and system, and you'll see this user extensions. So that's where you want to, that's the folder you want to open up and you want to move the files you downloaded. So I'm going to open up the extensions folder. And one thing you want to check is make sure you're in the extensions folder. It will probably be empty depending on if you've installed extensions before. If you end up in this folder, because you might click on the wrong button, that's not where you want to put the files. They have to be in the extensions folder. So now I'm going to open up my downloads directory and just drag it over and i have a lot of crap in the <laughs> downloads directory so let me just simplify it here for you okay so here's the next gen and you can see i've downloaded it twice whatever i'm going to delete the extra ones okay so now i'm just going to copy paste them right over here well i'm actually i think i'm moving them maybe not that's a copy all right anyway i'm copying them into the inkscape extensions folder and i'm closing it out and then this is the other trick, and you probably are familiar with this. If you install fonts and you want Inkscape to pick them up when it's open, you have to close all your Inkscape windows and reopen them. So I'm going to close Inkscape, and I'm going to reopen it. All right, I'm going to open up that template. All right, there we go. So I have my template again. And now I'm going to go to extensions, documents, no, extensions, export, and it should be there now. It's called Next Generator. So I'm going to open that up. This is the handy dandy um, help file that I was talking about. And this talks about, too, you have the option of changing colors and images, too. I'm not doing that in this example. Um, there's some pretty good instructions here. I can probably add that in another video if anybody's interested. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to pretend like I was doing this from fresh. So I'm going to pick talks.csv. That's the file, the CSV file that I showed you in the spreadsheet app. Um, Non-text values to replace, that's for, the, that's for the color and graphic option that I'm not doing here. Um, you can do multiple formats. You can do PNG, PDF, SVG, PS, EPS. So for this example, I'm going to use PNG, but it'll work fine for SVG too. Um, there's a DPI for any bitmap based format. Um, this, I, I had pre filled this, but basically by default, it'll say something like your variable name. So you're going to want to replace this. This is basically um, what the file name will be before the dot. So, like, it'll automatically add .png for you. You don't need to add that. But I decided to make it use the talk name variable, talk name like that. And then um, I just picked the folder, I made the example output folder. And just so you know that I'm not cheating, this is my example output folder. You can see, voila, it is empty. Now, we're actually going to keep this open so you can monitor it. And it's actually pretty fast, but I only have four examples in my CSV. Um, it might be handy to have the CSV open, too. So let's just do that. just so you can see it while it runs. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hit apply. And here they come. And you can see all the talk names. It's doing them in order. The pandas are marching. Why Fedora is the best Linux. Bamboo tastes better with Fedora. And the best talk you ever heard. Now, if I open them up, there, I see, and I changed the left aligned and it worked. It's left aligned. Um, let's see, will this go to the next one? I don't know why it's not letting me browse, but my computer is kind of acting funky right now. It's not really getting along with Google Meet lately. So, and that's what I'm using to record this. But there you go. Here they all are. Pretty nice. Um, the other trick here so, if you wanted to see them in SVG, we'll do the same thing. You'll see them populate in. Now, and I don't know why. Okay, I'm getting previews on these. So, the preview of the SVG files, if you're using Fedora 36, if you're using Nautilus and GNOME, will look funky. Um, I think this is some kind of bug or issue in the library that Nautilus uses to render SVGs, which is not the same library that Inkscape uses. So if I were to open this in Inkscape, it will look fine. So check it out. Is it opening? Do, do, do. There it is. 
See, so it works fine in Inkscape and it's all editable. So, you know, you might want to do this if, I don't know, you had to change something last minute and you didn't want to auto-generate them again from the CSV. You just wanted to make a quick change. Like maybe Panda decided their last name was Bamboo, so you need to add that, whatever. So there you go. I um, hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. But if you have any questions, uh, my email is duffy at redhat.com. Enjoy.